Okay, so I think after eight and a half thousand kilometers in the camping Porsche, we should really take a closer look. The Porsche 924, the craftsmanship, superb. The performance, breathtaking. And the price of leasing one, surprisingly affordable. Drop by your Porsche Audi dealer and find out how little it takes to get behind the wheel. Why lease a car when you can lease a legend? Here's a little history lesson. Back in the early 70s, Porsche was tasked by VW to develop a sports car using their parts. The, the car in question was supposed to live under the Audi brand. Now in 1975, when the development was well underway or nearly finished, um, VW decided that they no longer wanted to pursue the project and cancel it. Porsche then decided to buy back the project rights and release it as their own. Now, this is obviously littered with VW parts, and in later 80s and 90s models, they m made it much faster, they used all Porsche parts and uh, made it much more complex. This is a 1978 model, and it's none of that. Up front, we have a whopping 125 horsepower from two liter of displacement on an inline four sourced from Audi, and uh, originally used in a van. And then all that power goes through a torque tube to the rear mounted transmission, which has five speeds, not a lot of synchro left, and then out to the rear wheels through an open differential. Apart from a new used engine that we had to put in, all of that is uh, stock. Since a car of this nature is obviously not really meant to go off-road, we had to make some changes and some additions. The first and the most important one is obviously the suspension. We lifted the car rear and front by 40 millimeters. And uh, although we love a good all-terrain tire, for the winter adventure that we did, we needed some proper snow tires. And these Nokia and Hakapalita R3s were absolutely Terrific. We love them. I, I mean, honestly, surprise of the trip. And they're not even spiked. But yeah, maybe there will be all terrains on this in the future. Obviously, we didn't stop at the bottom. We also had to do something up top. And because you need a full size spare, and the fuel tank in this car is quite small we obviously had to have a roof rack. So as we do, we went to Front Runner and built this out of off the shelf components and then added an ax because you have to have one amongst the, obviously the wheel and the fuel on the other side, as well as the mandatory grill and four Comet 500 lights up front, which nicely complement 
our two Rally 3000, which means we have over 500 watts of old school lighting on this. That is a little stupid, but it looks really good. Da, da, da. Since this is a sport car, sports car and we didn't really have any space, we opted to put the also mandatory Max tracks on the rear hatch of the car, on a custom fabricated and then construction glued on mounts. On the interior, things remain largely unchanged. We did, however, opt to replace the 60-ish amp hour battery with a 95 amp hour battery uh, laid flat because that's the only way it would fit, which we use to power our auxiliary electronics over here. We, uh, we installed a kill switch amongst um, additional 12 volt plugs, a ton of USB plugs, a Bluetooth transmitter instead of the radio so that we have space for a switch panel down here and then the most critical road trip accessory that one could ever add and that is the CB radio. So, so far it seems like a lightly modified wannabe rally car. But then we come to talk of uh, the last thing that is supplied with power through our auxiliary system, and that is the heater. And now is the point where it gets interesting. Despite this really not looking like it, this car was actually built to sleep two people in temperatures way below freezing. Uh, you know, it's kind of rough to really show what this car is capable of when just standing in the workshop and like, me talking about it, so uh, why don't you come along camping? Okay, since we have arrived at our makeshift uh, German camp spot, we need the key to work out how the camping works. As you can see, the car is clearly not fully packed for obvious reasons, which is why I'm gonna simplify this. Just pretend all the stuff goes in front of the seats, which is where it would normally go in minus 20. Like this, and then this flaps forward, and then you put the seats as far forward as they'll go. Next step is to lower the rear bench as you would do normally and then turn this platform 90 degrees and it folds so that it fits in the stock configuration here. Now normally you would do this with two people which makes it a little bit easier but I'm gonna make it single-handedly and uh, struggle a bit and as you can see there is a lip here right here uh, where this slides in very neatly and then opens up down here then when this is folded down you tighten these camping table legs on either side. Then you only take this custom fit mattress, turn it around, and uh, you're done. Nearly. These are needed next. These hook in on either side. and uh, allow you to have the hatch partially opened and taking all the load of the pop top.
the way the pop top is constructed, you have an outer layer and an inner layer. The inner layer obviously goes in and the outer layer goes over so that when you have harsh wind and rain, no water will ever go in. During the summer months, this would likely be completely enough. But... And I'm in! I am in! To make sure we survive the winter cold that we were in, these marine buttons were fitted in, uh, in addition to the original carpet retaining buttons that were there. And those close off the rear very nicely. Now currently it is very, very warm in here, but if it were minus 20, you would flick this thing here, which would then trigger this heater, which is B-roll situated in the spare wheel well. Okay, uh, we are built. We have a beautiful spot, so we are going to have a decent evening. So that's it, and I think as you can see, if you're determined enough, lots of cars can go lots of places. You know what? This was an unexpectedly good idea. We both didn't think that this car would fare as well as it did, and now we're completely hooked on the idea. So you should go and do something cool too. If you have any questions, you can leave them below, by the way. And then uh, see you when the next project gets going. Goodbye. <laughs>